Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video, this is the Game Economist, and today I'm going to give the Azure Star-Lord armor set an analytical review. Before we begin, I'll briefly explain all of the criteria that matter to me when I'm giving armor a tier rating. First and foremost, the aggregate skills, including any set bonus skills and decoration slots are counted. That means if a piece of armor has one skill, one decoration slot, and a set bonus skill, then I give it a weight of three skills, and that weight is further broken down by the number of armor pieces you need to finish the bonus skill, as well as the size of the decoration slot and the size of the built-in skill. The next thing that's considered is how important those skills are to Monster Hunter World's build meta. One level of agitator is not equal to one level of critical boost because critical boost is a more universal skill that most builds want. So even though they're both considered medium decorations, one is higher tiered than the other. Also, some set bonus skills are totally pointless while others are incredibly important. For example, the critical element skill that is found on the Azure Star-Lord set. The last thing I consider is the elemental weakness and strength of that armor set. While some players, particularly speedrunners who can just juggle the monster the entire time, they don't really care or worry about having the correct resistance against a monster, the average player, myself included, should be considering elemental weaknesses because resistance plays a role in keeping us alive. Let's begin by talking about how you unlock the Azure Star-Lord set. I'm reviewing it now because it only just became available for everyone on the consoles. You'll need to play two different events that start with the USJ acronym in the beginning of the quest name. For the consoles, only one of those events was available at one point, I'm referring to the Summer Festival, which meant you couldn't build the armor set. Now during the Fall Festival, both USJ quests are available and you can finally build the set. The first event is called USJ Gold Star Treatment and you'll fight three Jagras. The second event is called the USJ Blazing Azure Stars and you'll fight a Dodogama and an Azure Rathalos. Finish those quests to farm the materials needed to build the Azure Star Lord set as well as the Azure Star Longsword. All right, now that I've talked about how to unlock the Azure Star Lord armor set, let's begin an analysis of its value to the armor meta. Starting out with this resistance to elemental damage, one nice thing about this armor set is that it actually doesn't have any weaknesses to any of the elemental types, and it has a medium resistance to water, fire, and dragons a little better. Having a fire resistance is nice because so many of the toughest monsters in the game deal fire damage. So we're going to give this armor set a B plus for its elemental resistances, that's the rating for the elemental resistance. The only complaint would be that it doesn't provide as much elemental resistance as some of the other armors do, like ones that provide provide four elemental resistance of a particular elemental type, which seems to be the max amount one piece of armor can provide. You'll also note that there aren't really any strong water monsters, so its water resistance doesn't really matter, and it also doesn't give any resistance to thunder damage, which does matter. Alright, now that we're done talking about the elemental resistance, let's move on to talking a little bit about the set bonus skill, Critical Element, which you can unlock with only two pieces of the set. You can also unlock Mind's Eye Ballistics, but you need a much larger investment of four pieces of the armor set. You should also know that the Azure Star Lord set can be mixed with the Rathalos armor set and the Rathalos Soul armor set in order to build the same set bonus skills. Now, one of the reasons we're so interested in this armor set is because of the set bonus skill critical element, which is considered a primary skill for mostly all elemental damage builds. And this can include weapons like the lance, bow guns that use elemental ammo, some sword and shield weapons, and especially dual blades and bows. All you need to know about elemental damage is that it is more efficient the faster your attacks are. So weapons with a faster moveset tend to rely on elemental damage setups, and elemental damage setups utilize the set bonus skill critical element to optimize their damage. So now you know why we're so interested in the Azure armor set, because it has that skill critical element on it, and a major part of how we'll be tiering this armor set is by comparing it to the other two Rathalos sets. Alright, and now we're ready to begin. Starting with the helmet, the Azure Star-Lord crown comes with one large decoration slot, 
one level 2 skill called Agitator, and the Rathalos Mastery skill, so this is not a very efficient piece of armor. First of all, most builds don't use the Agitator skill, except for when they have, a, I don't know, a lot of extra slots left over, and want to add a small amount of extra damage to their setup. That's because Peak Performance is a preferable skill to have rather than Agitator. And then of course, the Rathalos Soul Helmet Beta is going to give you the pretty much universally good skill called Critical Boost, and two small decoration slots, which are always useful on elemental builds because you need to add elemental damage decorations to your setup. So the Azure Star-Lord Crown is going to receive a C rating for neither being efficient nor beating out the other Rathalos helmets in usefulness. Next we have the chest piece called Azure Star-Lord Armor, which is kind of a very generic name for what's really, uh, you know, a chest piece. Normally they call the chest piece male, right? Like Azure Star-Lord Male. Uh, you'll notice that it only comes with one medium decoration slot and one level of handicraft. So similar to the helmet, this is going to be a very inefficient piece of armor because it's already so easy to efficiently build handicraft with other pieces of armor and with the handicraft charm, and you have better universal skills to choose between on the Rathalos male beta, which gives you two levels of weakness exploit and a small decoration slot, as well as the Rathalos soul male beta, which gives you one level of free element and one uh, medium decoration slot. Yes, so like the helmet, I'm going to give the Azure Star Lord male a C. And then we move on to the vamp races called the Azure Star-Lord Gauntlets. And I gotta say, I'm really disappointed with them because the Rathalos and Rathsoul vamp races are also generally not good choices, and neither are these. They give you one large decoration slot and two levels of the recovery up skill, which you pretty much never need. So now our elemental builds will always be looking to fill the vamp races slot with a different armor set because the Rathalos armor set have only terrible options for that armor slot. I'm going to give the Azure Star Lord Gauntlets a C- for pretty much being useless. Alright, after the van braces, we have to take a look at the coil, which Capcom has named the Azure Star Lord Tassets. It even comes with a little sword on the side. Unfortunately, it's strictly cosmetic. How cool would it have been if the armor sets had special abilities built into them? But that's a discussion for a different video. I'm going to give the Azure Starlord Tacits a B. It's definitely not going to compete with the Rathalos Coil on fire damage builds, but there may be a few cases where this is the most optimal build on some white sharpness melee builds that can only spare the helmet and coil armor slots for building critical element in order to stay efficient. I don't even know if this situation really exists, but I'm looking at it and I think that it does. And that's because the Azure Tacits is actually not bad in terms of efficiency. Most coils uh, they come with a medium decoration slot and two small skills, right? And then there are a few standout coils, particularly the Kolv Tarath coil and the recent Arch-Tempered Kushala Deora coil, which would compete directly with the Azure Star-Lord Tacits. However, you are finishing the critical element skill with this set, which helps it keep up with those other two coils, uh, the, the Kolv Tarath coil and the Arch-Tempered uh, Kushala Deora coil. So it's hard to tell if this coil is really that good anymore, just because we've gotten that Arch-Tempered Kushala Deora coil that gives you two handicraft and two small decoration slots, because you could have just gone ahead and built that, and then your second piece for critical element would have just been something like Rathalos Mail or Wrath Soul Mail. All right, and now the only piece of armor left are the leggings, which are called the Azure Star-Lord Guards. The Azure Star-Lord Guards are really the best part of the Azure Star-Lord set. Pairing this with the Wrath Soul Helmet is going to set up two levels of crit boost while simultaneously freeing up the chest piece, which normally would go to the Rathalos Mail or Rathalos Soul Mail. But now you can build Draken Mail into the slot to completely finish off crit boost, and that's extremely meaningful to players who haven't unlocked any crit boost decorations. It also comes with a large decoration slot, which is perfect for bow builds that really need that slot for adding a spread shot decoration. In fact, many bow builds would have used that leg slot for something like Lava Sea of the Greaves, and those only give you a medium decoration slot and the spread shot skill. On the other hand, I should mention that I've done some testing in the past with the elemental ammos for the bow guns, and I found that critical boost would barely change my damage output at all, so these guards might not really have any meaning to any bow gun builds. However, bows should definitely benefit from having that skill, Critical Boost, as long as they can still fit Mighty Bow into the build somewhere else as well. So the Azure Star-Lord Guards are going to receive an A tier rating for adding a meaningful build option to the meta and being decently efficient in the leg armor slot. 
And that's all of the pieces of armor. When we tally up the scores, the Azor Starlord armor sets gets a final total score of B+. And that's the end of my full review for the Azor Starlord armor set. Let me know if you agree with that tier rating. Let me know if you would have changed any of the pieces of it, or maybe if I'm not noticing something for build optimization. And other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time.